Big Cotters and Panthers from Carolina. Here we go. Cotters can clinch if they... To the gray unis we go. We are undefeated 2-0 in them. So we're going to keep winning. Michigan State getting fucked. Let's go. Finds wow. And Baker Mayfield still at quarterback. This should be interesting for the Cotters, who have won the toss and deferred. So the defense is up first. Here we go. Keep an eye on that Packers score on the bottom of the screen as well. This is a late game, so the Cotters might have finished, and the Packers may be final already. Panthers will start at the 27. Those are actually not horrendous numbers from Baker. They're not great. First and ten Panthers. Mayfield under pressure. He goes down on the first drop back. Dade Pitchford with a sack. Heck of a start by the Cotter defense. They were just flying in there. Mayfield. Throws complete. Not that much. Kyle Tosk on the tackle. Third and 11. Cotters can get off the field with a three and out on the first series. Empty backfield for the Panthers. Mayfield. Complete, but not there. Michael Handel and Rick Rourke bring him down. And the Panthers will punt a three and out for the Cotters to start. Elliott gets fucked. Nothing new. And here comes Brady Lang, the pick machine. Will he throw another pick this week? It's likely. But he also makes some really darn good throws, too. So. It's like Jameis Winston. Brady Lang is Jameis Winston. Wallace. Tried to throw a tackler off him. Didn't have a ton of success. Two-yard pickup. 105 yards on the ground last week. He's got 1275 on the year with nine touchdowns. Right back to him. Five-yard pickup. And it is third and three. Cotters need to avoid answering with a three and out of their own. Lang will throw quickly. Complete first down. That is Andrew Tyson. 14-yard gain. Handoff Wallace finds the hole and gets 10. Great run by Wallace. Into Panther territory. Not a great run. One yard gain.
Jordan Elliott enters, and he'll pick up five, and it'll bring up a big-time third and five for the Cotters. Here we go. Lang, under pressure, gets sacked. And the Cotters will park. That was a rare, rare occurrence where the sack truly was not Brady Lane's fault. Pressure broke, protection broke down, and pressure came pretty quick. And he didn't even have a chance to get rid of it. Offensive line got beat there. And the Cotters now forced to punt on what looked like a pretty promising opening drive. Elliott's punt is fucking ass. 28-yard punt. Fuck you, Jordan Elliott. That punt is so shit. Panthers start at the 20. Mayfield. Picked off Greg Terry to the 10. Greg Terry picks off Baker Mayfield and the Cotters are in business. What a horrible, horrible throw. And a hell of a play by Terry. And the Cotters, just like that, have a chance at seven. Quite the turn of events. Lang will throw here. Complete. Nice tackle. It is Sam Holvey down to the three. Eight-yard pickup. Williams here in at fullback for the Cotters. Lang. Complete touchdown. It is Hunter Dickinson. His second touchdown of the year. And the Cotters have a 7-0 lead. Big Hunt. The 60 overall tight end makes a play. Cotters in front. Two plays, 11 yards. Doesn't get easier than that. I can't believe Hunter Dickinson actually is on the field. I purposely made him the third string tight end and a 60 overall terrible at everything. And Caleb still sticks him on the field. And he's making plays. I mean, give the guy credit. He's helping the Cotters win. I like him a lot as the football tight end, not so much as the pussy basketball center, if I'm being honest. First down, Baker Mayfield. That was another dangerous throw. Please throw us another pick, Baker. We would appreciate it. Second and ten. He'll drop back. And we'll dump it off. And that was a big tackle. Owen Van Ness was right there. And it's third and seven. Cotter defense can get off the field again. They've been dominant. That is a wide open man, though. Shouldn't have jinxed him. And the Panthers are down to the 47. That is Tommy Tremble. His second catch. McCaffrey, nowhere and a flag down. That'll probably be 10 yards in the backwards direction. And it will be. It's a hold on Carolina. Ikam Ekwanu, first round pick. First and 19 now for the Panthers. Baker will drop back. He'll step up and will throw it incomplete. This is the Baker Mayfield everybody knows and loves. Cannot complete an accurate ball. Second and 19, empty. Dumps it off. DJ Moore will pick up eight. And we'll bring up third and 11. Let's go. Ah, so this is a Saturday game. So the Packers and Dolphins play on Sunday, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. Blitz comes. Mayfield hit as he throws incomplete. Great dialed up blitz by Caleb Cotter and the defensive staff. Got home. Mayfield under pressure. And it was inaccurate. And the Panthers will punt. 
Good stuff by the defense so far. They've allowed just one first down. Elliott, not much. He'll get it to the 17. Here comes the big Cotter offense. Troy Williams in at fullback. Hunter Dickinson in at tight end. He's in motion. Wallace to the 20. Three yard pickup. Five for 23 for him so far. Yeter Gross Matos, the Rape State product, makes the play. No rushing yards so far by the Panthers. That's crazy. With McCaffrey on the team still. First down, Sam Holvey. Brady Lang, four for four. They'll go back to Wallace. And he's not going very far. Six yards, not bad. Lang. Complete. That is Kieran Tawari. Down to the 40, and that is probably the final play of this first quarter, unless the Cotters decide to snap it here in the next three seconds. They will. This is the final play, and it is complete. Owen Van Ness pick up a seven. Brady Lang, six of six for 66 yards. That is a lot of sixes. We head to the second quarter. Cotter's in control, 7-0. Low snap. Play action. Lang all year to throw it he'll chuck it deep and it is intercepted that was just such a horrible throw so bad Xavier Woods picks it off all the time on the planet and that's what you come up with it was a wobbly throw it had no chance didn't even get to the end zone just so 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 bad throws I've ever seen Jameis Winston Lang with his 18th pick. And the Panthers take over. First and 10 from the 8. Mayfield. Complete DJ Moore. Nice gang tackle. That's Terry and Tosk. Paratees with the tackle. Gain of 6. Panthers have yet to run the football. First down. 11 passes and no runs with Christian McCaffrey on your team. Matt Rule, you are brain dead. They finally run the ball and it actually picks yards up. What do you know? Eight yards for McCaffrey. Cotter defense needs to step up. McCaffrey again, first down, and he breaks free, and he is inside the 45. What do you know, handing the ball to McCaffrey gets you some yards. Matt Rule, please just fail to realize that for us. They give it back to him for the third time, and he doesn't get much. Van S makes the play. Three-yard pickup. Mayfield steps up, completes. Gain of four, and it brings up third down. Let's see if the Cotters can get off the field. Empty backfield. Mayfield in the gun. He'll throw and complete, wide open, over the middle of the field. That is Richard Higgins. 
Panthers down to the 35. Mayfield again, will complete again. He's 10 of 14 and he's starting to move the ball. Robbie Anderson still on the roster, six yards. Second and four, back to McCaffrey. He is going to be short. No, they're gonna give it to him. That's such a horrible spot, refs. So, so bad. That's so fucking bad, man. Justin Fields 0 for 1 passing, bottom of the screen. Love to see that line. And the Cotters are gonna get in the backfield. That is right, L. Big time play. Second and 13. Coming for the Panthers. Under five to go here in the first half. McCaffrey, not much. Cotter defense is coming to play now. Rydell was in on that one too, along with Joel Salen, and it's third and 13, empty backfield. Mayfield quick throw, and he has a man, and he is inside the five. How did that happen? What the fuck just happened, defense? Chuba Hubbard had nobody covering him. And not only do they get the third and 13 conversion, they now have first and goal from the four. What exactly broke down here? Hard to tell. Looked like Rick Rourke just missed the assignment or something, but he was coming across the field. Just a miscommunication by the big Cotter defense and had a very costly time. Panthers have a chance to tie it now. They'll pitch it. Foreman gets tackled behind the line. That is Jackson Rydell again. Four yard loss. Rydell is coming to play on this drive in run support. Empty backfield now. Mayfield tries to get a jump, doesn't get it. Will look to throw. He has a guy. DJ Moore is in. And the Panthers have evened it up. Long, successful drive for the putrid Panthers offense. Not going to have Caleb Cotter too happy. Letting Baker Mayfield cook you is just not the recipe for success. This Cotter defense has not played their best football here of late. Extra point up. It is good. We're tied at 7. 14 plays, 92 yards, 6 minutes and 44 seconds. Can the offense respond before the half? They'll have three minutes to do so and a field position starting at the 26. Lang will throw. He'll complete. Great throw by Lang there. And that is Kieran Tawari getting it to the 43. They'll give it to Wallace. He has a hole, and he gets it to midfield, gain of seven. Cotter's looking to put points on the board before half. Will they choose to snap it before the two-minute warning? They will. Lang will throw. He will nearly throw a pick. He is so damn lucky that that wasn't intercepted. And he'll get another chance. Third and three from midfield. Lang to throw. Lang has the time. Steps up and it is dropped. Sam Holvey had a chance at it. And Jordan Elliott is out to punt. And that punt is absolute dog piss. <sighs> Thought the Cotters could put some points on the board before the half, and instead they'll give Baker three timeouts and 148 after he just went 7-7 seven to seven on you. So not the greatest turn of events. How about a turnover? Baker to throw. He has a wide open receiver over the middle. It's actually his tight end, Tommy Tremble who now has five catches. What is wrong with the Big Cotter defense? They're a 91 overall with players on all levels. 
and they can't stop Baker Mayfield and Zach Wilson? Well, never mind. They do stop Baker Mayfield because Jack Youngman with a 14-yard sack. There we fucking go. Under a minute now, under 50 seconds. How aggressive will the Panthers be on second and 24? Still have all three timeouts. Baker will throw, and Tremble is wide open again. Timeout Panthers, they got 20 of the 24 back. I mean, what the fuck, defense? Third and four now, six catches for 76 for Tremble. Baker in trouble, completes it, and McCaffrey takes the screen to the 45. Very well executed and well blocked. Cotter defense is just getting out coached, outplayed everything right now. And this is putrid to see against the fucking Carolina Panther offense with Baker Mayfield still starting. Not even PJ Walker. Mayfield in trouble. Can they sack him again? Jack Youngman, legacy perf. Is the mic working now? I didn't even know I went mute. I was talking the whole time. Microphone better be back now. As the Cotter start from the 25. Lang. Dangerous throw and he got it there to Tyson for a gain of nine. That was real darn dangerous. Lang is playing with fire here in this game. Second and inches. They'll throw. They'll complete. That is Sam Holvey. First down. Cotter's not even thinking about running it here. They want to throw it. Lang will throw. Blitz comes. And it is knocked away. Farmer had a chance to catch it, but it also got deflected by number seven. Second and ten. Going to throw again. He will check it down to Wallace, who makes a move for a first down, and he is down to the 46. What a juke by Tim Wallace. That was nasty. Let's see that again, please. The Bills up 26 0 on the Bears. This was just a nasty juke. Whoop! First and 10 from the 46. Cotter's not even trying to run. Lang, please get rid of it. He does and completes it down to the 25. It's Tyson. Cotter offense is starting to cook now. Three catches for 44 yards for Andrew Tyson. Will they finally run it? Yes, they will. And Tim Wallace with a spin move inside the 10. Spun around inside the 5. What a run. Tim Wallace showing some moves here in this drive with a juke off the catch and then that spin move. Can we see that again? 
No, they cut the replay off short. Here, no, they, again, they cut it off short. Bro, trust me, is my source, but Tim Wallace is nasty. Williams in at fullback. And they give it to him. And he is going to be a yard short. Nice tackle by whoever that was on the Panthers. Cotters will have second and goal from the one. This time, Lang will throw. And it is going to be short. I thought forward progress had him in for a touchdown. And the refs disagreed. Are we sure? Wow, I thought he was in, and the refs did not agree. Cotters have third and goal from the one now, and now they really... 14-7, Cotters finish it off. Extra point coming. 14-7. Big Cotters have the lead. Looking to clinch the NFC North. Panthers bring out this return. And they only get it to the 22. Baker is back out on the field. He's kind of been low-key cooking the Cotters, so let's see if we can get a stop. He'll hand it to McCaffrey. McCaffrey has about eight. Terry makes the play. That is picked, and that is going to be a Joel Salen pick six. Joel Salen for Defensive Player of the Year. Put it down in your damn ballot. This guy just makes plays every Sunday. And this is another house call. Extra point coming, and the Cotters just put up 14 points in about 30 seconds. Just phenomenal. And that is quite the way to turn a game. Panthers will try. They'll have fucking phenomenal field position off a kick. Jordan Elliott made his own tackle there. That tells you all you need to know about the kick coverage. But nonetheless, the Panthers now have to have a score here. They're fucked. 21-7. How about that huge play? Joel Salen just picks footballs off every week. Mayfield will keep. He will chuck and complete. Who the fuck just got toasted? It was Rydell. DJ Moore just fucking mossed Jackson Rydell right there. And that is a play that the Panthers needed and they got. What is this sidearm throw? Wow, Rydell, you just got absolutely owned. Shake it off and get back out there, make a play. No big deal. Joel Salen got mossed in week two against the Commanders by Terry McLaurin. And look at the season he's put together. Head up. Big open field tackle made there. That is Alex Amari. One yard gain. Panthers have been pass heavy today with Baker Mayfield at quarterback. Quite the interesting decision. McCaffrey is going to be a yard short. Greg Terry another tackle. Third and one with four minutes to go here in the third. McCaffrey first down. Inside the 30. Last thing the Cotter defense wants to do after that back-to-back -to -back touchdowns in 30 seconds is give fucking the Panthers another touchdown.
McCaffrey, not much. Jackson Rydell bounces back with a TFL. They might actually give that to Troy Williams, but that's bullshit. Rydell made the play. Great bounce back already after getting lost. Mayfield completes. And it is Bryant Williams making a tackle. Gain of six. And it is third and five. Empty backfield for Baker Mayfield. Can the Cotters hold him to three? Mayfield drops back. Throws. Has a guy. And that is McCaffrey down to the six. Come on, defense. Got to be better than this. Just straight up have to. First and goal, Panthers. Under two to go in the third. Mayfield to throw. Dangerous throw as he tried to dump it off on a little screen there to McCaffrey, who has gotten nearly every touch on this drive. As he loses four yards, Bryant Williams, TFL. Mayfield second and goal. They try another screen incomplete. And Brady Lang shares a handshake with Caleb in celebration. Third and goal now. Cotters can hold him to three after all that. Empty backfield. Let's make a play, Big Cots. Mayfield to throw. Mayfield in trouble and goes down. It is Jack Youngman's third sack. What a legacy performance by the Big Cotter second string defensive tackle. I mean, Jack Youngman has been dominant. Panthers will settle for a field goal. 37-yard attempt. Jack Youngman may just be the MVP of the game. It is up and it is good. 21 to 10. What a win by the Cotter defense, though, to keep it at two scores. Forty-nine seconds to go here in the third. Cotters need to put together a nice long drive to eat some clock here and put this one away as Jordan Elliott takes a rare knee. Lang will throw. They're not going to burn clock. They're going to throw out of bounds. Mike Farmer on the sideline. Seven-yard completion. This may be the last play of the third. Complete first down, Big Cotters, Andrew Tyson. Unless I saw that wrong. As we head to the fourth quarter, Cotters in full control, looking to trim that magic number in the division down to just one. And maybe zero if the Packers lose tomorrow. Ten more minutes, and the Cotters are 12-3. and three. Wallace, mm, big-time tackle there. Six yards of carry for Wallace today, 60 yards and a touchdown. Nice performance. Cotters have not run it a ton. They'll run it here again, though, and this is going to be a yard short of the marker, and this is a big-time third down. Can't punt this away from this spot. Let's go. Pick this up. They'll throw. Lang holds it forever. Finds his man, Mike Farmer, inside the 35. Second catch for Farmer. Cotters in Panther territory. Handoff. Wallace. Huge hole. He might go. He is in. Touchdown, Big Cotters. It's Wallace's second of the day, and he's going to dance. Massive hole created for him by the Cotter offensive line, and he was gone. It's a house call for Tim Wallace. And the Cotters have probably put this one away. The dance moves get a D minus though. Those are shit. Kick 
76 yard, two minute and 20 second drive, capped off by a big 35 yard Tim Wallace touchdown as he is well on his way to another 100 yard rushing day. And the Cotters are looking to clinch this NFC North with a Packer loss tomorrow and the Miami Dolphins are gonna get it done for you. Don't worry, Cots. Although Teddy Bridgewater's the fucking starter. So maybe not. Panthers gotta just start chucking it now. Baker Mayfield's incapable of that. Quick throw, incomplete. Nice play, Rydell. He has bounced back nicely from that tough play against DJ Moore. Second and 10, Mayfield. Throwing, complete. That is fucking Tommy Tremble who just absolutely owns our team for whatever reason. Bro has to have like 100 yards now. 90, I was close. First down, Panthers. And that screen is not even close to being completed. Second and 10. 30 passes to 10 rushes for the Panthers with Baker Mayfield at quarterback and Christian McCaffrey at running back. It's quite the interesting strategy, but I am not going to complain as there's a nine yard pickup on the screen. Third and one. Empty backfield. Mayfield will throw. He's got time. Pressure has not arrived and he will complete it to DJ Moore. Pressure has to get there. I mean, come on. Troy Williams, where the fuck are you, my man? Ben Keefe, are you ever going to show up this year in pass rush? That was pathetic amount of time in the pocket. First and 10 from the 37. Quick throw complete. That is some bum. Number 30. Panthers will go hurry up. They need a quick, quick score, that's for sure. Mayfield will throw, another screen, and a first down. Terry makes a play. Is that Chuba Hubbard? Yes, it is. Under six to play. Baker steps up and completes again. Robbie Anderson down to the 11. Cotter defense just letting them march right down. I mean, I get it. You're up 18. I understand it. You want to make them eat clock. But, they, I mean, they're marching it right down. The Cotter defense is really mid. Like, it's just kind of true. Touch pass gets down to the five. I mean, this Cotter defense the last three, four weeks has just been completely mid in every regard. Joel Salen hasn't been, but the defense as a whole has been as the Panthers are going to get stood up and an inch short of the marker as more clock runs. Approaching the four-minute mark, third and inches, full back in. Christian McCaffrey out of the game. Maybe he's hurt. Deontay Foreman tackled for loss. It's Austin Cotter. Have a day. Deontay Foreman, two carries for negative seven yards. That is a day. And the Panthers just have to stay on the field. I mean, why kick it here? 337. Cotters can put the exclamation point on it with a stop. And they do. Great coverage. That is Joel Salen, who should be the defensive player of the year in the league. Just blanket coverage by Joel on Robbie Anderson. Unbelievable stuff. And the Cotters get the stop and the dagger here in Carolina. Let's stat pad Tim Wallace. There's a decent start. He is over 100 yards on the day. Was before that, but he'll pad it a little bit. Second and three. Wallace, not much. Maybe got one. And this will be the final play before the two-minute warning. We'll just get it so we don't have to punt. Why even bother punting it back to him? Just pick this up. Third and two. Lang will throw. And complete Kieran Tawari. And that will take us to the two-minute warning. And the Cotters are one first down away from ending it. But the game's really over. Doesn't matter. 
Let's just get a couple more quick stat pads in. X Factor activated for Lang. Wallace will get it. He will get about five. They'll give him six. He's up to 115 yards today. Minute 20 to go. Panthers not even bothering with the timeouts. Wallace. Five yard pick up there. First down. And this will likely be the final play of the football game. First and 10 from the 33. Right back to Wallace. He gets about four. Six, actually. My fault. And a 125-yard day for Tim Wallace to end it. The Cotterville Big Cotters are 12-3. and And with a Packers loss tomorrow, clinch the NFC North. 28-10 your final here from Carolina as the Cotters ultimately dominated this game. Offensively, defensively, Joel Salen at a pick six. And another huge win. The Cotters are an elite football team. 7.7 .7 yards per play. Held Christian McCaffrey and the Panthers running attack to 34 rushing yards. Brady Lang was pretty mid, 16 at 21, touchdown, one pick, 176 yards. Tim Wallace was not mid. 17 carries, 125 yards, 7.3 yards a carry, and two touchdowns. Receiving Holvey, four catches, 24 yards. Tyson, four catches, 50 yards. Kieran Tawari, three catches, 50 yards. Mike Farmer, two catches, 27 yards. Owen Van Ness, a catch for seven yards. Tim Wallace, a catch for 15 yards. And the only receiving touchdown was Hunter fucking Dickinson. Three yards. Three yards, no sacks allowed by the Cotter offensive line. And what do you know, another double-digit tackle day for the NFL's tackling leader. Rydell added nine, Van Ness added nine, Rourke added seven, Salen added five. Three TFLs for Jackson Rydell, what a day. Bryant Williams had a TFL, Troy Williams had a TFL, Austin Cotter had a TFL, and Owen Van Ness had a TFL. Jack Youngman with a phenomenal performance. Three sacks from a guy who isn't even on the field all that often. Dade Pitchford added one of his own. Joel Salen with a pick six, and Greg Terry with a pick to set up a short field for the Big Cotters. Pass deflections, only one, and it was Joel Salen. And Jordan Elliott did not attempt a field goal today, but was perfect on his extra points, as usual. And now is the moment of truth to see if the Big Cotters are NFC North champions. We do not give a fuck about young boy. We don't we don't care. All right? Joel Salen now a 94 overall and something tells me he's going to be an X factor after this year with the awards he's going to rack in. Anyway, I will now click advance week and if that Packers record says 9 and 6 the Cotters have clinched even if the Packers beat the Dolphins the Cotters will have a two game lead with two to play so the Cotters would have to lose out the Packers would have to win out and the Packers would still probably have to have some other tiebreaker since the season series would be 1-1 that we're not even sure of. So the Cotters are in hell of good shape, but they can officially raise that banner if we see 9-6 and six next to that Packer name after this advance week screen. The Big Cotters have clinched the NFC North. They are the NFC North champions. Let's fucking go. What a season by the Big Cotters. As I'm just going to sim this game against the Bears. Because now that we've clinched. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to play that Packers game week 18. But I'm going to play all the backups so that we can have some fun and see all the backups play in that game since we have already clinched. Now, we also need to play for the first round bye, so maybe I shouldn't do this quite yet. But at 12-3, and three, I think we're in good shape. If we have a two-game lead on the Saints, I think we can, we can get by. The Saints are 
10 and 5. So we actually only had we do have a two game lead on them. So we can sim this game. If we win this game, we clinch the first round by as well. What a year by the Cotters. We don't need to watch this Bears game. We need to get to the playoffs. And the Big Cotters beat the Bears 21-13. We'll check some stats. The Big Cotters have clinched the NFC North and clinched a first round by in the playoffs. Just a phenomenal season all around. What a year. We'll check numbers from that Bears game. And then we'll play one more game tonight, and it'll be all the backups against the Packers. And we will play the postseason on Saturday night when I'm back from Michigan. Brady Lang, 244 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, and 125.9 rating. What a day. Tim Wallace, very, very shitty day. 16 carries, 41 yards, and a touchdown. Did have a touchdown, though. Was fit pretty shit overall, though, receiving. Five for 94 and a touchdown for Farmer. Four for 71 and a touchdown for Tyson. Three catches, 36 yards for Sam Halvey. One catch, 26 yards for Kieran Tawari. Van Ess had a 17-yard catch. No one allowed a sack. Offensive line continues to play well. And a very rare non-double-digit tackle day for Terry. It was Amari and Salen who led the tackling. Greg Terry had seven TFLs. One for Terry, one for Youngman, Sacks. One and a half for Cotter, one for Keith, and a half for Troy Williams. Did anyone get a pick? They did not. Did anyone force a fumble? Did anyone have a pass deflection? One for Amari, one for Tosk, one for Rydell. Catches allowed. Oh, that's a stat we don't normally see. Salen got cooked. Wow, Amari got cooked. Tosk got cooked. What is wrong? How did we let Justin Fields cook us? What are we doing here? And force fumbles. Did anyone force one? They did not. So those are your numbers from the Bears game. And we will be pulling the starters in this Packers game and playing all the bums and having some fun here in Week 18 with everything clinched. From Lambeau Field. A lot of upgrades. Bryant Williams, Sam Halvey, Jack Youngman, quarterback Joel Salen, who's getting the start this week, and Brady Lang is now going to be a 95 heading into the playoffs. Here we go. I'll adjust the depth chart once I get into the game so that I don't have to permanently adjust it. And we will be pulling out the grades. The Cotters are a 91 overall team now, by the way. Fuck the servers. Oh, I thought the servers were about to go down. It was actually just me accidentally hitting it. Pulling back out the Grays. Cotters are a 91 overall team. We are dominant. No reason to not win the Super Bowl. I'm excited to see the backups. Now, the thing about playing all the backups is that everyone is still going to get to see their own player play, but just at the other position. Like, Brady Lang will start at middle linebacker. Uh, Tim Wallace will start at defensive end. Kyle Tosk is going to play some running back. Uh, you know, Troy Williams is going to start at tight end. So everyone's still going to get to see their own player play just at a different position. So this should be fun to end the regular season. And if our bums can beat the Packers this week, then we are officially the greatest team of all time. I'm playing myself at running back because Jordan Elliott is not here. So fuck him, I'm playing myself. I'm actually here doing this shit. Depth chart time. Joel Salen, the lefty scrambler, will play some quarterback here today for the Big Cotters. At running back, am I hurt? I'm still hurt, so no, it will be Jordan Elliott. Damn it. How am I still hurt, bruh? What the fuck is that? That's so Mickey Mouse. Fullback, uh, Hunter Dickinson. Why not? Because Troy's going to start a tight end. 
Wide receiver, let's move Van Ness up. Let's move Rydell up. And then we'll keep Tyson there in the slot. Not mess with that. Tight end, Troy Williams, Hunter Dickinson. Offensive line will stay the same because we don't need to play the backups there. Tim Wallace, starting left end for the Big Cotters. Uh, no one else is healthy to start out alongside him, so Bryant Williams, you will stay out there. How are we? How do we still have injuries, bro? How is Kennedy still hurt? We didn't activate him. Are we serious? Can I still play him? I don't think so. So it's probably just gonna play Bryant Williams. Jack Youngman has been playing some good ball, and he will start at defensive tackle. Kieran Tawari will be rushing the passer. And Owen Van Ness is hurt. What the fuck? Where is he, bro? Owen Van Ness got hurt last week, damn it. So Lang was going to start anyway. Interesting. Nate Reed will come in at middle linebacker as well, even though he's an outside backer. Actually, no, he'll play outside backer. And Greg Terry will stat pad his tackles. Corner. Tyson, number one corner. How do we still have Max Marcus hurt, bruh? We'll let Joel stat pad his defensive player of the year candidacy. Is what we'll do. And free safety Mike Farmer will start. And strong safety Michael Handel will start. We do not have a backup kicker. What about kick return, punt return, Elliott will stay... Third down running back, Jordan Elliott. Greg Terry will play here. Slot wide receiver will just keep Tyson there. Rush end. Tawari. Rush end. Reed. Rush DT, Jack Youngman, sub linebacker, Brady Lang. Slot corner, Amari can stay there. No big deal. And there we go. The backups are officially going to play, and the Cotters will start with the football. Joel Salen. Perfect time for Jordan Elliott to join the chat. He's starting at running back. Number six, the lefty slinger slash scrambler, Joel Salen. Those are some good numbers, if you ask me. I mean, the guy hasn't thrown a pick. He hasn't thrown an incompletion. Has not thrown an inaccurate ball all year. What a stud. Look at all these bums in this huddle. Why am I clicking jump to next play? I'm such a dumbass. Let's see what Joel's got. Hand off Jordan Elliott, and he has nine yards. Nice start. Tim Wallace, your job might be in jeopardy based on that one rush alone. Salen, quick throw, complete. It is his first completion of the year, a three-yard dump off to Troy Williams. Andrew Tyson in motion, the only offensive starter to stay out there. And it's Jordan Elliott with a 12-yard gain. He is cooking. It's kind of OP to keep the starting offensive line out here. I might put some backups in. Honestly, that's what I'm going to do. That is nearly intercepted. That was just a horrible Joel Salen decision. I got to complete the... Oh, it's not going to fucking let me, bro. Let me go to fast and see if that changes anything. Yes, it does. Okay, so now it lets me go back to the menu. I got to complete the bum lineup and put backup offensive linemen in, too. It's only right. I got to make sure that it's all the backups possible. 
Dade Pitchford at left tackle. Do we still have injured guards, bro? Are you kidding me? How do we still have injuries? Theo Coley's hurt. So we actually are not going to have very many backups because we don't have healthy ones. Theo Coley's our only backup guard. We signed Zachary Thomas somehow. So you're starting, bud. Welcome to the Big Cotters. And I don't think we have a healthy backup tackle. That's crazy. All right, well, we some, we put three backups in. Good enough for me. Cotter and Reed, the two weakest offensive linemen, keep their jobs for the week. And Zachary Thomas is an honorary Big Cotter member. Second and ten. Joel Salen steps up. He's going to run, and he, with a juke move, didn't quite work. Got to love the effort, though. Third and one, nine-yard gain for Joel Salen. He keeps. It's a first down. Read option, and Joel Salen has 14 rushing yards. This is going to be fun to watch. Salen will throw, and he'll throw a pick right at the linebacker. This will not be very fun to watch. That is brutal. Oh, my God, that throw is bad. Shake that one off, Joel. Let's go. Maybe just stick to running. Just be a running back like Seals. I mean, where the fuck's that ball going? Where is it going? What can the backup defense do for the big Cotters? Rodgers, quick throw, complete, good coverage though. Greg Terry is on the only starter on the Cotter defense still out there because Owen Van Ness is hurt. Hand off, first down. Ben Keefe makes the play. Ben Keefe is basically a backup because he never does anything. Rodgers. Throwing complete right in front of Brady Lang. Nine yard game. Hand off Aaron Jones. Big hole and a first down. First and 10 for Rodgers from the 32. Complete again. Good tackle though, that was someone. Can't tell the number, I think it was Handel. Six yard pickup, actually that was Mike Farmer. Quick throw, complete. Joel Salen in coverage there. Defensive player of the year candidate. Quick throw, complete again. Rodgers is just methodically moving this ball on this bum cotter backup defense. Second and two, inside the 10. Hand off Aaron Jones, he has the first down. First and goal coming. Pitch to Jones. And he's got some space. Good tackle, though. That is someone. I can't, I don't know. I can't see the number, bro. I want to give some credit where it's due. I think it was Farmer. Second and goal. Another pitch. They never work. And the Cotters snuffed it out. A TFL for Greg Terry there, and Joel Salen as well. So two starters, damn, ruins the point of a backup defense when you have so many fucking injuries. It's a bums. 
Rodgers to throw. It is intercepted! Rick Rourke somehow found his way back on the field and picks it off. Stop putting the starters in. But thank you, Rick Rourke, for making the play. Rick Rourke would for, didn't get the memo that the backups are supposed to play, and he trotted out there and picked Aaron Rodgers off. Quite the story. Jordan Elliott, not much. He does have 25 yards and three carries. Second and seven, motion man. Fake it to him. Elliott gets blown up. Kenny Clark just owns us. And don't forget about that first meeting when Kenny Clark literally was in the backfield on every play. And there he is again with a TFO. What does Joel have? Can he actually throw? He'll step up. He'll complete. And a first down to Jordan Elliott. Nice play by Joel to step up in the pocket and dump it off to his running back for a first. Tyson in motion. They fake it to him. They give it to Owen Van Ness on the end around and he fumbled it away. Darnell Savage with the recovery. Eric Stokes, my fault. And Owen Van Ness fumbles it away. Cotter bums are not off to a good start. Joel Salen with a pick and Owen Van Ness with a fumble. Those guys are on the bench for a reason. Aaron Rodgers takes back over. The defense did their job, though, as Alex Amari makes a tackle gain of seven. Packers do not have to run another play before the end of the quarter. Let's see if they do anyway. Looks like they will. Empty backfield for Aaron Rodgers. Can one of these bums make a defensive play? Rodgers, stepping back. That is nearly intercepted. Amari had a play on the football, knocked it away. He'll get a pass deflection. He is staying at his spot at slot corner because we don't have enough healthy corners. Rodgers, third and three, complete, wide open. Joel Salen and Mike Farmer in coverage. And that is the end of the first quarter. Packers will have a chance to take the lead when we return for the second. Rodgers, quick throw, complete touchdown. Robert Tunyon is in for the touchdown. Packers lead it 7-0. Other than the Rick Rourke pick, who's actually a starter, the bum Big Cotter defense is not very good. And I think he could have predicted that. Seven nothing, four play, 35 yard drive off of the Van Ness fumble. Cotters will start at the 29. Salen airing it out. He has a man. It's complete. Andrew Tyson. How about that throw by the lefty slinger, Joel Salen? I didn't know he had that in him. Wow. He can throw it. First and 10 Cotters inside the 30. They bring Van Ness in motion. They hand it to him on the sweep and he's going nowhere. Gain a zero. Gain of 
Second and ten. Joel Salen drops back, completes it. Troy Williams picks up three, and it's third and seven. Empty, not, never mind. Completely just didn't see Greg Terry standing there. Or that's Elliott, actually. Salen will keep it. He's got a first down, and he is down to the 16-yard line. Joel Salen is cooking now. First and ten big cotters. Elliott, not much, picks up three yards. Salen will look to throw. He is going to keep it. Looking to score and he's a little short gets it down to the two first and goal big cotters Joel Salen is electric folks Hunter Dickinson in at fullback here first and goal from the two handoff Greg Terry is going absolutely nowhere he lost a yard Kenny Clark absolutely owns our offensive line second and goal from the three Dickinson stays in the game. Right back to Terry, and he is blown up again. He's lost a yard on his first two carries. Maybe throw the football. Just a thought. Now it's Elliott back in, if I'm not mistaken. Third and goal from the four. Salen will throw. Or will he? He will take it himself for the big Cotter touchdown. Have a drive, Joel Salen, 40-yard bomb down the field to Andrew Tyson and did the rest with his legs. And the big Cotters have evened things up. What a play by him. I thought he might get sacked, and he just kind of shrugged the defender off and said, I'll just take this end zone. 14 rushes for the Cotters split between Elliott, Salen, and Terry with Tim Wallace getting a nice breather on the sideline this week after his big time season. Great drive by the backup Big Cotter offense. 7-7 seven, seven ball game, nice kick Elliott. 5.40 to go for the pack. Handoff, Aaron Jones, big time hole. Handel comes in and makes the tackle eventually. First down, Packers. Rodgers drops back looking to throw. He's got a completion and a first down. Sammy Watkins. Rodgers will complete to Watkins again. Andrew Tyson in coverage. Play action. Rodgers. Sidearm throw to Robert Tunyon. What is that throwing motion by Rodgers? That was so fucking odd. But it worked. X-Factor activated for Rodgers. Hand off, Jones, Brady Lang missed a tackle, and Greg Terry made the play for him. Seven yard pickup. Hand off, Aaron Jones has some space. Mike Farmer came in and finally made the play, but this drive is just as easy as it gets for the Packers. First and 10 from the 12, they're getting whatever they want on this backup defense. Jones again, huge hole again. He is down at the one. 58 yards on five carries. First and goal from the one yard line. Cotters bring everybody within two yards of the line of scrimmage. They give it right back. A.J. Dillon is in for the touchdown. That was just so easy. I mean, what do you expect? This, this is a bunch of backups out there along with Terry and Salem. 
but at the same time, that was so fucking easy. 14-7 pack. Can Joel respond to that 74-yard drive? 2.06 to play in the first half. Elliott catches it at the four. Can he have a big return? Sorta. Gets it to the 30. We'll take that. Final play before the two minute warning. Joel Salen completes it. Second and three. Salen throwing a dot. Andrew Tyson going off with a bunch of bum receivers around him. Getting some stat pad opportunities as that is not going anywhere. Tackle for loss by the Packers there under a minute and a half to go. Salen looking. He will complete it. It's Tyson yet again. Down to the 40. Quick throw. Salen, that was so dangerous. He's lucky that wasn't intercepted. Second and 10, minute and one to go. Quick throw. That is just straight up dropped. That is Jackson Rydell who dropped that ball. Third and 10. Salen drops back, throwing another drop. No help for Joel Salen on this drive. And Caleb Cotter is going to try the 57-yarder with Jordan Elliott. It is up. It is off the upright. Doing his best Cody Parkey impression there. He had the leg, but he missed it off the left upright. That had the leg from about 60 or so but couldn't get it to go. And now the Packers can add three. Caleb Cotter also taking the week off with the starters apparently with that decision. Rodgers complete and a broken tackle for Christian Watson. Ben Keith couldn't bring him down. Can't believe how many fucking drops there were on that drive. Joel Salen was getting it out quick and throwing darts. 43 seconds, Rodgers all day. He'll dump it off, Aaron Jones will pick up three. Aaron Jones finds some space, picks up three more. Empty backfield now, third and four. Big chance for the Cotters to force a tough field goal. 35 seconds, Packers one timeout. Rodgers, incomplete. And this will be a 50-yard attempt for Mason Crosby. Not easy by any means. It is up. It is short. The big Cotters get the stop. And they, once again, will have a chance at points. Neither team wants these points before half. They just want to keep giving it right back to the other team. Can Joel Salen get the Cotters in field goal range? Three timeouts, 28 seconds, ball at the 40. He'll throw quick, and that should have been a pick six. Absolutely should have been housed. Horrible, horrible, horrible throw. Second and 10. Please take your second chance and do something with it. Throwing it to the sideline. Did he even get out of bounds? He didn't. And he forces Caleb to call a timeout. Please throw it beyond the six, the sticks, Joel. Third and six, 20 seconds. He'll look. He will complete Andrew Tyson to the 45 timeout, Caleb. Cotters can get three on the board here if they complete another 10-yard ball. Elliott had the leg from 57, 
59 last time. Handoff. It's Elliott setting his own kicker up with a seven yard run. Timeout Caleb with one second left. He barely got that off. You are so lucky, Caleb Cotter. This one is from 55. Jordan Elliott to end the half. It is up and it is wide left. That was pathetic <laughs> on both teams. Three missed field goals in the final minute of the half <laughs> by both teams combined. Elliott missed from 59 and 55. Dude just can't make from 50 plus. Really hope that doesn't come back to bite us in the playoffs because it feels like it might. Halftime report, we don't really care this week. Vikings and Bears, these two having a mid-off. 7-7, seven, seven, we don't care. Thirty-one seven at half. Bucks over Falcons. Delete your franchise, Atlanta. That is embarrassing. And finally, Patriots Bills. Hope that stadium blows up. As the Bills lead it, seventeen ten. Someone please drop an atomic nuke on that stadium. Competitive first half here in Green Bay. The Cotter bums are hanging with the Packers. Would like to have one of those two Jordan Elliott field goals. That's for sure. But we'll live with not having them because the Cotters are playing it tight. Packers will start with the ball here. Final half of the Big Cotter regular season is officially underway. What a year it's been. What a ride it's been. Soak up these last 20 minutes and get ready for some postseason action. Aaron Rodgers has his X-Factor activated. Rodgers, complete first down. Amari in coverage. These bums just really don't stand a chance against Rodgers. Let's be for real. The backups just can't get it done on defense. On offense, they, had, they stand a chance. Jack Youngman is so good! Back for Youngman, who has just absolutely been a monster the last couple of weeks. Now in the starting role, gets home for a sack on Rodgers, right as I was criticizing the defense. Motion man comes. It's a tight end. Looks like DeGuara. Handoff. Jones blown up behind the line of scrimmage. I missed the number there. It was Nate Reed who hasn't touched the field all year. Hell of a play, man. Third and 15, let's get off the field, Cotters. That is going to be a 67-yard Packer touchdown. And the exact opposite of getting off the field. Romeo Dobbs beat the entire defense on a eight-yard slant and house called it. I mean, what the fuck? What is this? Amari, what are we doing? And where is the safety help on third and 15? How is there no safety help over the top on third and 15? I get that these guys are backups, but that is just horrible, horrible, horrible scheming by the defensive staff of the Big Cotters. And I mean just horrendous. 21-7 Packers, that was brutal. <laughs> Elliott will bring it out to the 26. Safe to say no one on defense is actually going to be taking any jobs. That's for sure. What can Joel Salen cook up here on offense? Hunter Dickinson at fullback. Handoff, Elliott, five yards, 39 on seven carries for him so far. Salen, throwing, picked off. That could be six as well, and it is going to be.
And this one has gone downhill real quick. Devondre Campbell pick six. Second pick today by Joel. Safe to say Brady's job is safe. 28-7 Packers. Cotters are going to have to come up with some miraculous comeback here to get to 14 wins. Joel Salen, two picks today. Both of them have been brutal. He's a running back, that's for sure. He'll turn, he'll throw, and a flag is going to bring this one back. It was a hell of a play. Unless it's roughing. Please be roughing. It is roughing the passer. We'll tack on 15. What a play by Joel. Looked like he was going to run. Stepped up, bulleted a throw. That was, that was fucking awesome. Brady Lang hasn't made many throws like that this year. Stepping up, complete again. First down. Good response so far on this drive. That's Troy Williams. And the Cotters looking for a quick answer to that pick six. Joel Salen. Complete. Owen Van Ness. Second and four. At the 15. Sailing to throw. Complete again. What a great tight window slant throw. Jackson Rydell. I think. Maybe Tyson. First and goal Cotters. Salen keeps it. He is in for his second touchdown. What a quick response by the Cotter offense after that pick six. My goodness, what a job. 28-14, this one is nowhere near over. Joel Salen has two rushing touchdowns. He's fun to watch when he's not throwing picks directly at linebackers. I'll tell you that much. Watching a lefty is pretty fun, and he can run the ball. One minute and 50 second yard four play drive for the Cotters. That is pretty fucking amazing. Got helped by a 15 yard penalty as well. Can the defense get off the field is the big question here late. Good kick coverage. Packers start at the 24. Let's stop Aaron Jones, please. Come on, linebackers. Greg Terry's on the field. I mean, let's go. Rodgers to Jones. Nice tackle. That is Kieran Tawari bringing him down at the line of scrimmage. How about a three and out defense? Second and 10. And he sacked Kieran Tawari again. Legacy drive for Tawari. Play in the run game and then an absolute hit stick of a sack as no one blocked him. Third and 15, great chance for the Cotters to get it right back. Rogers stepping up. That will not get it done. Alex Amari makes the play, and the big Cotter offense will be back on the field. How about this turnaround? Joel Salen pick six makes it 28-7. Cotters respond with a four-play drive on offense for a touchdown and a three and out. These bum backups are fighting for their lives out here. Got to give them credit as the Cotter offense will take over at the 32-yard line with 4.05 to go in the third. Salen, time to throw incomplete. Definitely iffy as a passer, no question about it. He has his good throws, he has his shit ones. 
Definitely an interesting backup quarterback. Handoff, nowhere. Two-yard loss for Elliott, and the Cotter's in danger of punting it right back. Kenny Clark owns our franchise more than any player I've seen. Maybe fucking Tommy Tremble would give him a run for his money. Salen, dangerous throw. That's going to be a first down. Jackson Rydell. I thought he threw his third pick. It got there, and Rydell stretched out for the first. How about that? Let's see this again. How close was this to getting picked? Not as close as I thought. My eyes deceived me a little bit. It's a pretty darn good throw. And Rydell got their first down cots. Salen steps up and he's going to get sacked. Kenny Clark, what do you know, makes the play. First sack by the Packers all day long with three backups in, in the on the offensive line. Pretty impressive stuff. Salen, huge drop. Complete. This is coming back, though. It's going to be a hold. Ron Harper Jr. with the holding call. Second and 22. Backed up to the 30 for the Cotters. Empty backfield now for Joel. He's got time, and that's all he musters up. Incomplete. Tyson didn't get two in. And it's third and 22. Why not take a one-on-one -on -one shot? Nothing to lose. Salen will do so. And it's complete. It is complete. Owen Van S went up and got it. Wow, Salen took the one-on-one -on -one shot and it paid off. And here come the Cotters. Inside the 35. Salen again. He completes again. And inside the 15 goes Troy Williams. This backup offense is getting it done against a good Packers team. This is crazy. First and ten, can the Cotters cut it to one score? Handoff, Elliott, bit of a hole, and it's coming back with a hold. Damn it. This time it's Austin Cotter, who's a starter, and he still makes that boneheaded penalty. Fuck you. First and 16. Minute to go in the third. Back to Elliott. He's got a hole. Jordan Elliott down to the seven yard line. Gain of 14. 51 yards on nine carries. This offense is exciting to watch, man. Second and two. Let's punch this in. Back to Elliott. And he's down to the two yard line. That may be the end of the third. Will the Cotter snap it again? They will. It's a pitch. Greg Terry is tackled at the five for a loss of three. And it's safe to say Greg Terry is not earning himself more snaps in the playoffs with this three carry negative four yard performance. We head to the fourth final quarter of the Big Cotter regular season and these backups are fighting. They are battling here in Green Bay. Second and goal for the Cots from the five. Salen looks to throw, steps up, he'll run again. He's got another touchdown. Third rushing touchdown of the day for Joel Salen. It's a one score game here at Lambeau Field. Joel Salen will not give up. He breaks a Kenny Clark tackle, which no one on the Cotters has done all year long, and scampers in. Get Tim Wallace back in the chat, bro. Brof must have fallen asleep. We can't have him missing this comeback. Extra point good, 11 plays, 65 yards, and the Cotters are not done just yet. 
What can the defense cook up now as the Packers will start at the 25, 9.56 to go. Joel Singlin has three rushing touchdowns to go along with like 225 passing yards. Does have two brutal picks, but I mean for a backup playing with some bums, he has played his ass off. Alex Amari tackle there. Cotter offensive line number one in the NFL in sacks allowed this year. Not surprising. Even with the 10-minute quarter adjustment, they would still be number one. They do not allow very many sacks unless Brady Lang takes them. First down Packers, that's Aaron Jones. Tyson got there just a little too late. Defense needs a stop to give their offense a chance. Under nine to go. Rodgers, all kinds of time is going to be tacked on. I always think it's a hold, and then with how late it is, I know it's going to be personal foul rough in the passer. That's going to hurt. Austin fucking Cotter, you're a starter, you dick. You're a literal starter making these mistakes. Packers down to the 36. Jet sweep is not going anywhere. That is Brady Lang making the tackle. I think someone started that. Might have been Kieran Tawari and Brady Link finished it. Second and ten. Need this stop, Cots. This is the edge of field goal range. We saw Crosby miss one earlier. Aaron Jones gets about four. Third and five from the 31. Huge play in the game for this backup defense. Can they buy a stop? Rogers is sacked and he fumbled. And it's picked up by Jack Youngman. Cotters take over. Are you serious? Austin Cotter forced the fumble. Jack Youngman recovered. And he might have been down. They're probably going to take a look. Either way, though, it's a huge sack, even if he didn't fumble. They'll take a look at it. My goodness. Even if they overturn this, it's a massive, massive sack to push him out of field goal range by Austin Cotter, and I think he was down. Damn it. I think he was down, but still, huge play. They do overturn it. Packers get a chance at a 55-yard field goal. What a job by Cotter to make it this tough. It's up. It is short. Big Cotter offense will take over from the 45 down by just seven. The defense comes through. My goodness. I need to watch this play. What is this? This. What a fucking thug, bro. God, I hate Michigan State so much. They're such a thug school. First and 10, 7, 10 to go. Can the Cotters come all the way back? That is not a good start. Three-yard loss for Jordan Elliott. Brady Ling is the only Cotter fan still awake to watch the backups fight for their lives in Green Bay. Elliott. Six-yard gain, third and seven. Here we fucking go. Joel Salen, what do you have in you on this third and seven? The snap. Salen. Time. Complete first down. Jordan Elliott. To the 42. Joel Salen has looked so damn good in this game if you take the two picks out, which you can't do, obviously. But without those two picks, he's been so good, and Elliott goes nowhere. Devondre Campbell makes the tackle. Five minutes to play, second and ten. Right back to Elliott. He's got some room to run, and he'll pick up seven. And this has to be four down territory for the Cotters. Third and three. Greg Terry in at running back. Lang will throw, or er, Salen will throw, and he should have thrown a pick. 
dropped pick by Adrian Amos. And will the Cotters kick a field goal? They will not. They will keep the offense on the field. Fourth. Salen throwing. Complete. Troy Williams inside the 20. What a play by Salen on fourth and three. And here come the Cotters again. That is just a beautiful throw. My goodness. It was a short one, but it couldn't have been placed more perfect. Right behind Devondre Campbell. Cotters in the red zone looking to tie it up. Salen drops back. He'll keep, and he'll get sacked. Preston Smith gets there for the three-yard sack. Second sack for the pack. Second and 13 for the Cotter offense, 337. Salen will look to throw. He will keep it. Now he's got some room. And he picks up about three, gets back to the original line. I thought if he kept it, you know, ran up field instead of sideways, he would have had more yards. Under three to go, third and 10. Salen. Sideline complete. That will not nearly get it done. Four yards for Tyson. And you have to think you're going for this as well. If you're Caleb Cotter. Why are you throwing this ball six yards short of the sticks? That can't happen. Offense stays on the field. Fourth and six. Can they pull another rabbit out of their hat? Salen. Complete again. Down to the one. Jackson Rydell. First and goal from the one. Joel Salen is playing out of his mind. Can the Cotters tie it? Pitch to Terry. <laughs> I mean, it's never worked. Craig Terry, negative seven yards on four carries. Have yourself a day. This is the most exciting Big Cotter game of the year, and it's the backups with everything clinched. That is so funny, man. Two-minute warning. Cotter's looking to tie it up. By far the most exciting big Cotter game of the season, and it's the backups. Another pitch and another loss. Greg Terry has negative 12 yards rushing, and it's not even really his fault. Caleb Cotter's a dumbass. Throw. Complete. Touchdown. Big Cotters. Greg Terry makes up for the negative 12-yard day with a 12-yard touchdown to tie it. Unbelievable Big Cotter comeback. They were down 28-7 in the third, and we are now tied at 28. Do you believe in miracles? What an exciting game. Can the Cotter defense hold? What a performance by Joel Salen. Yes, has he thrown two picks and had a couple more dropped? Absolutely. But he has played his heart out and made every key throw. And now he comes in. And now Greg Terry comes in after his touchdown at linebacker on special teams and makes a hell of a kick coverage play. Packers backed up to the 17, minute 39 to go. What does the defense have in him? Rodgers looking. That is going for nine yards. I thought they had him way shorter and fucking Handel couldn't tackle. Second and one, Rodgers throwing complete. That is Tunyon to the 33. Packers will not use a timeout. Minute to go. Rodgers completes it on the crosser. And a tackle is made by Andrew Tyson. Gain of just six. Under 50 seconds. All you got to do is keep him out of field goal range. That is incomplete. Handel broke it up. Third and four, Cotters can get the stop right here. Rodgers, time complete, and Aaron Jones had an angle towards the sideline and ran right into the tackler. 
Here we fucking go. Timeout Packers. 24 seconds to go. They need about 15 more yards to get into field goal range. Rodgers has way too much time and has a man. Brady Lang, the tackle, timeout Packers. They are approaching field goal range. Now Crosby has missed two from 50 plus today. You just cannot let him have 10 yards right here. Need to make a play. Motion, hand off, and that it might just be too much. That's nine yards, and I think that might just be too much. Did the Packers get the timeout off? They barely did. Matt LaFleur nearly cost his team a chance to win. Call an ice to kick or timeout, Caleb. There we go. Caleb's going to try to ice Mason Crosby. 46-yard attempt for the win. The Cotters have played their asses off. And this one is for the win. From 46 yards out, it is up and it is good. And the Green Bay Packers escape with a 31-28 win. Damn it. What a fight by the Cotter backups here. With the division clinch, nothing to play for. This group with Joel Salen and a bunch of backups on both sides of the ball came back from down 28-7, tied it at 28. Defense just couldn't get that last stop. And the Cotters will finish the regular season 13-4 and and pick up that first round bye in the NFC. What a year. What a damn year. They're, the Cotter backups nearly beat the second place team in the NFC North and a wild card playoff team. Just think about that for a second. Joel Salen, 22 at 32, 279, a touchdown and two picks. Definitely had some bad throws, but man, did he play well other than that. 14 carries, 66 yards for Jordan Elliott. Joel Salen, 8 carries, 55 yards, 3 touchdowns. What an awful line for Terry. 5 carries, negative 12 yards. Receiving Tyson, 7 carries, 93 yards. Nice stat pad day for him. Troy Williams, 5 catches, 52 yards. Jordan Elliott, 3 catches, 22 yards. Jackson Rydell, 3 catches, 34 yards. Owen Van Ness, 3 catches, 69 yards. And Greg Terry, 9 yards and a touchdown to make up for that putrid rushing line. Cotter and Pitchford each allowed sacks. Defensively, Brady Lang, the leading tackler, 11. Alex Amaru with 7. Michael Handel with 6. Joel Salem with 6. Greg Terry got a nice little 4 stat pad in to pad his NFL lead. Tackles for loss, Reed had 1. Salem had 1. Terry had 1. Sacks, 1 for Cotter, 1 for Tawari, 1 for Youngman. Interceptions, Connor Rourke found his way on the field and got one. Pass deflections, Handel and Amari each had one. Nearly a forced fumble for Cotter, but it was overturned. And kicking, Jordan Elliott, 4 for 4 on extra points. 0 for 2 on field goals, tough day for him. But to be fair to him, both of them were from 50+. plus. And that is your Big Cotter regular season. They finished 13-4. and four. They'll get a nice break on their couches next week in the first round, the wild card round of the NFC playoffs with a first round bye. And then they will be back in action for the divisional playoff. I am going to wait to show end of season numbers until Saturday night stream because we only have two people actually awake and watching right now. So I'll wait for Troy and for Joel and for Rick and for a couple other people to be on. So for me to show end of season stats, I will check and see if there's any league leaders. Tim Wallace, third in rushing in the NFL, 14, 39 yards, 12 touchdowns, and that's only playing 16 games because he took last week off. Anyone else up here? Joel Salen leads the NFL in interceptions with seven, 13 pass deflections. I think he had two, three defensive touchdowns because he had two pick sixes for sure, and then I'm pretty sure he recovered a fumble for a touchdown. So that is your defensive player of the year, and if it isn't him, then the league is racist. It's that simple. And that will do it for the Big Cotter regular season. 13-4 and four is a hell of a year, and they nearly pulled it out with the backups. What a job. We will see you on Saturday night for the Big Cotter playoff run. Be there or be a fucking loser. Good night, Big Cotter Nation. Roll Cots.